All righty, welcome in everyone. Today's Wednesday workshop, it is April 10th. Doesn't look like we have any questions yet, but please feel free to drop them into the Q&A and we will go over them. I'm gonna go ahead and throw up a poll. Um, this poll is just, it's just allowing us to learn how you guys, um, what's your preferred learning style, a length of videos, if videos are, are the learning style that you like or live. Um, we also want to hear a little bit more about you and how you're accessing our knowledge base. Um, this kind of information is super helpful for us, not only just me, who is assisting and training you guys, but it also assists our content team as well in making sure that we're creating the kind of content that is easy to access and um, it makes sense to you guys. So definitely feel free to take a moment to fill that out um, and we will... Go ahead and take a look at some FAQs because it doesn't look like we have any questions just yet. Alrighty, sounds like it's been a pretty quiet week, which is kind of nice. Hmm. Ah. So there's some questions about, um, okay. So it looks like the only question that we had, it was something that was asked on Facebook was just about, can we use, you know, the API or Zapier or smart blocks to automatically attach or remove different documents based off of conditions? Um, unfortunately, that is not a feature that we have just yet. Um, but I'm sure it's something that we've taken under consideration. It's just a matter of figuring out how to build it out. Um, the great thing about smart blocks, if you guys are um, kind of like in the beginning phases of like building out your smart blocks, or even if you're just, you know what, I think I'm going to start working on smart blocks a little bit more, is most of it is working with verbiage, right? So it's adding in or removing um, verbiage. It can be as uh, simple as having a name populate as well, right? We want to make sure that we're including our co-buyer agent if there is a co-buyer agent present, right? So it can be something as simple as that, or it can be more complex where it brings in different tables um, into that email, um, or it even might even bring in some more cells, or it might add in some more verbiage, or it might have it add in like a whole paragraph or a whole email. Um, it kind of just depends. Now, one thing that you can do is you can technically go through, depending on what plan you're on, um, you can build out those different email templates that you might have, right? So the example is, is they want to have it that, you know, if the property type is equal to residential, they want to be able to send out a, an attached moving list. Um, or if the buyer's agent is equal to a specific person, a specific name of someone, then they want to attach a specific graphic. Um, now, for the first part, if the property type is equal to residential, they want to be able to send out an email that has that moving checklist attached to it, right? But if it's equal to a different kind of property, maybe they don't want it. Depending on what plan you're on is going to depend on what you can kind of get your system to do to set up for you. If you are on our, and I'm going to go ahead and just go to pricing. If you're on our grow or pro plan, my suggestion is to have a task template and an email template that's built out for each one of those property types. So if you have a specific something that you would send out only to your residential properties, then I would have a question either on my intake form or when that property is submitted to open to close and your TCs are kind of running it where they update the property type. And when they've selected that property type, they know that their smart blocks are going to bring on the correct information. And as long as that moving checklist has been either attached via the file storage, which is a really cool feature that we have. Think of it as kind of like a, a Google Drive feature that's in the background of your open to close account. File storage is just a place where you can put in these static files. So if the moving checklist is something that like, you know, it's static, it's the same checklist that we share every single time, we can have it added into the file storage. And then when we build, we're building out our email templates, I'm just gonna go ahead and open up our intro one. We can attach that um, file automatically via the attach file storage files. So what this does is it, it makes it so that it doesn't have to be on the actual property, right? This one, this uh, this option right here above it says that this uh, file role, as long as that file role exists on the property, then we'll attach it. 
the file storage instead would say every single time, make sure that this file is attached. So what I usually suggest if you're on the grow or pro plan that you build out those task templates, you build out those email templates so that if you say that the house is or property type is equal to residential, then you know that the correct email templates and task templates get applied. But if it's equal to new construction or it's equal to, um, let's say condo, or if it's equal to um, any other kind of property type that you might be working with commercial, if you're working with commercial, um, then instead it can bring on a different set of task templates and email templates. Now, if you're on that scale plan, you have a little bit more functionality than you would have normally with your task templates. If you're on the scale plan, you can build out triggers to bring up those different email templates, right? So when we're talking about our Grow Pro, we're mainly talking about having a task template that has a task trigger that's associated with it that will allow you to send out those emails, right? So this is a task template. It's my ba main buyer under contract. Here we've got our send opening emails. Those are those four emails that I'm sending out. Now, if I'm using my trigger templates, I'm just gonna go down to trigger templates and I'm creating a property field trigger template and I'm sending out information through that, I can get a little bit more um, specific with it, right? I can I can kind of go in and I can say, well, if it's equal to this, this, and this, then I want it to be this. So for example, my closing tasks, right? That's a property field trigger template. I might have three different emails. One of them is if it's a residential, I want to send out the moving checklist. If it's a condo, I want to make sure that they have the information for um, you know, the, the condo association. Um, or if it's new construction, maybe I want them to have another set of information that's um, specifically for new construction. What you can do is you can build out a specific email trigger and you can make sure that you have, I'm going to go ahead and clear out of that and just open it up. We're going to want to make sure that our condition type right here will say that we want to work with a property field. We're going to look for property type. And we'll want to say, okay, well, if it's equal to single family um, residential, then I want that specific single family residential email to come up for me to review it so that I can send that out. But if the property is equal to condo or townhouse, maybe I want a different set of or a different email to go out with a different attachment that's on it. Or if I say that it's new construction, I want a different email with a different attachment on it. So the the idea is instead of being able to have it that, you know, it's a smart block and if we say it, then it adds it on and I only have one email template, I would suggest having those unique email templates, every single version that, that you need built out into open to close. And then from there, if you need to alter the verbiage, you can use the smart blocks. But the idea of having each one of those individual email templates is that depending on what plane you're on, whether you're using our trigger templates here and you're creating those property triggers um, or those property field triggers, um, you can have those emails come up based off of the, the property type that you've selected or if you're using our task templates, right? And that's primarily how you're getting things on. As long as you say that the property type is equal to single family, then you know that that single family task template is going to come on that addresses, you know, having that moving checklist. So that's kind of how I would, um, how, how I would use those things. Um, there's nothing, there's not, I never discourage people against creating as many task templates as they need. I just make sure, you know, I always stress like it's important that you make sure that you're thinking of what kind of condition needs to be met for this to come on and when do I need it? Okay. So do I need it right when that intake form gets submitted? Um, do I want it to populate on the property before I even approve it? Or do I want it after it's approved? Or do I want it associated with another task template? I have a couple that are like that. I'll go ahead and just kind of check them out. So like in my task templates for my closing tasks, I believe I have one in my closing tasks. Let's go ahead and open it up. Here's my post-closing tasks. My post-closing is not going to be helpful. Maybe it's at the end of my buyers under contract. We'll see. Scroll down to the bottom. Here we go. I've got a trigger. Uh, I've got a task template right here that says trigger if contract is terminated, delete post-closing if not needed, right? And this one has a trigger associated with it. And if I click on it, this trigger, what that's going to do is if I check off that task, if I say, yeah, the contract got canceled, then I have my terminated contract task template come on. So that's kind of how we're showing like we can chain link these task templates to come on after it's already been submitted. 
right? After that intake form has been submitted, after that property has been approved, it just kind of depends on how you need them um, and at what state you need them, at what, at what point in the transaction you need them and why. Cool. Doesn't look like we have any other questions. Just taking a look, it looks like we did have an update recently on the 8th. We'll go ahead and go up to our person icon. We'll head down to our change log. And this is going to be where you guys will see any of the updates for our change log. So if there was a bug that you noticed and you were like, oh, you know, I, I completely forgot to submit it, but I noticed it's not happening anymore. I always suggest go to the change log and see if we've made any updates. We like to keep this pretty well updated. As things get deployed, we'll pop in what people were seeing and what the fix was. So here you could see this one says trigger pipeline and task uh, and trigger filtering. If you use the team uh, user filtering, sometimes the results were not accurate. It would show triggers assigned to different users or some of the triggers uh, properly assigned were missing. This has been adjusted to the proper results um, will now show based off of the filters that you set. Um, so we always like to include like, this is what the issue was. This is how we solved it. Or this is, it, or it is a, it is solved. So definitely feel free to come in here and check a, a take a look at this and take a look at the different um, other updates that we have. We don't really have any other, well, there's one more. It says a uh, health bar, but that's, that's already listed here. The health bar and in queue triggers too. I don't have any other FAQs. So I'll go ahead and pause. If there's any questions, definitely feel free to pop them into the Q&A. If you guys want to see a feature, we want to go over a feature a little bit more in depth. Maybe you're follow-up boss users and you want to talk about how to set it up so that you can push tasks from open to close into follow-up boss. If you guys want to take a look at your intake forms and you want to talk about some ways that you can have it that, you know, maybe you're making like a, a shorter intake form, a quicker one for your agents to fill out. And then you want some more of the heavier questions to be on the internal side. We can talk about how to set that up. If you guys are looking to create some smart blocks and you guys want to go over some troubleshooting on how to create those smart blocks, just let me know what we would like to take a look at. I'll go ahead and pause. Give you guys a minute to think about it. Go ahead and drop it into the Q&A, whatever makes the most sense. Um, and then I'll go ahead and end that poll too. Cool. Looks like we've got one. Uh, I'd love to hear more about how to use the messaging feature, the pros and cons of messaging versus emails. Um, if that is mainly for teams with multiple team members. So it, it, it kind of is, um, this is a great question. The messaging feature that, um, Kaylee's referring to is the feature that's available on the scale plan. Um, think of it as an internal messaging feature. So some of you guys might be familiar with like a system like Slack or Teams where it's like a, an, a virtual text messaging or a messaging feature or like a tool. Um, our messaging feature, think of it as kind of like that, except for it's native to open to close. Um, there's some really, really cool things about this particular tool. If you guys have very active clients or very active um, agents, they log into their portal. They're always looking for updates on how their property is going or um, what stage the property's at. This messaging tool can be a great way to keep in contact with them and get information from them faster. It's also like a different kind of engagement that might be um, a little bit more exciting for some clients, right? Sometimes it's nice when you uh, when you have like a buyer who's their first time buyer and you're like, hey, I'm going to give you portal access. In that portal, you're going to be able to see, you know, um, due dates. You're going to be able to see timeline. You'll be able to see things that we've completed. You'll be able to download documents. And if you have any questions, you can use our messaging tool to reach out to us and it comes to us directly. 
I'm going to go ahead and open up what that looks like in the, um, for that, that client. So for example, this is what a client portal will look like. They'll have that ability to see the properties that they're associated with, depending on what kind of permissions you give them will depend on what they'll see on that particular property when they open it up. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on this one. Once we get into it, what I want you guys to take notice is that I've got a property timeline here and it's just pulling in those dates for me. Maybe the other property is a little bit more cool. So this one has a lot, a lot more. So I figured the reason why it would be good to show you guys this is that if we needed to, you know, reach out about the final walkthrough date and I'm the buyer and I'm like logging in and I'm being really attentive to this, this could be a quick way for me to go, oh, uh, one to two thirty. Oh, you know what? Let me make sure that I let them know X, Y, Z here. The client is able to send a message to you directly. And then on that property, you're going to get a notification that an, a message was sent and it was regarding the final walkthrough date. So that's kind of one of the cool things about using this tool. Like if you guys want to have or share or provide a different kind of a onboarding for your guys as buyers or even your sellers, your lenders, or people that you're working with who are doing new construction, this can be a really, really awesome tool to be able to keep that communication within open to close and native to that property. The main difference between using, you know, emails versus messaging is that when we send out that email, I'm going to go ahead and just minimize this really quickly and open up a property. When we send out that email, let's go ahead and go to Ivy Lane. We can technically see emails that were sent from here, but we don't see emails that were received regarding the property, right? At least not until we've associated it back to the property and we've clicked on property emails. And, and once we've pulled it in, then here we can see it, right? These are also emails that have been sent in via the property email address. So most of these are probably just documents that were forwarded in. But unless you're using that API synced email and you're scanning and you're pulling in those emails and you're sorting them in Gmail, um, we don't really have a, a very fast way to pull in emails received into um, a specific property. We have that view for our email inbox if we just go to email inbox here. But when we're talking about it on that property, there's not really a quick way to see, did we get a message back? Now with the messaging tool, that's a little different. We do have the ability to see if there were any replies or if anything has been received from clients. We also have the ability to read past messages that were sent. Um, we're also, oh, well, this is messages that were read, sent from the agent or from whoever. Again, it can be, a, it can be an agent portal user. It can be a client portal user just depends. Um, we'll see ones that are sent. We can pin some of them. We can archive messages. It's a really great tool for being able to keep all of that communication in one place. Now, if you're, if the person that you're sending the message to does not have a, um, uh, an account, right? They're, they're not an agent portal user and they're not a, um, a client portal user, I believe, and I'd have to do some testing just to confirm this, but I believe here where it says, um, you know, who we're sending it to, I believe it will convert it to an email, right? So if we needed to, we can send that email out. Um, it just kind of depends. I just really love the ability to like view the thread and see what is the communication happening back and forth. You can uh, share attachments if you need to share attachments. So if they needed to send over a document, looks like Justin sent over this one. Here's that document. It looks like this is what that document is. In case we were looking for it, we can view the thread to see, hey, you know, I haven't received the document for the home protection. Can you send that over? This is what we received. Here's that document here. We can open it up and review it if we need to. So there's just some cool things with that communication and being able to have that um, transparent and open here. Looks like we have a follow-up email or follow-up question. What are the steps to sync emails so you can see them in the transaction just like you showed? Yeah, first things first, we're gonna wanna make sure that our email is connected. So we'll just go to our API sync, Google, Microsoft, either one, make sure that they're connected. From there, when you're on that property, when we go to sync the emails, we're gonna head over to that email tab. Now, again, like I said, there's a bit of manual work for this to have it work in the way that you like would want to have it worked. First things first, we're going to want to scan the emails, right? So first we would probably apply an API mail inbox. We'll go ahead and say scan emails to scan my emails. And then here I would choose the labels that are available. So you can see I've got quite a number of labels here that are in mine. In your guys's, you would most likely have those as um, addresses. You could have those labels as addresses. Um, and you would want to select whichever one 
made the most sense. So in my case, I'm not going to select really any of these because most of them are private emails and I don't want to link it to this particular property. But if this was the one that I needed to share, maybe agent portal invite would be a good one. Let me really quickly just double check and see what is in that uh, email folder. Cool. So that one's a good one. So here you'd select that label. Once we've selected that label and I'm going to see it, hopefully it lets me do it. Awesome. Here we've selected that label. It's going to load and then it's going to pull in those two emails that are already associated with it. So we can see here it's pulled in the two emails. This is where those emails. So it went from scanning those email. So you scan your inbox and then you go to synced emails and that's going to specifically pull in any emails that are assigned underneath that label. And so now this is emails that I've received from open to close regarding resetting my password or emails been created. This is emails that I've received. Um, and that's how you can see them on the property. So the process would be in your Gmail or your Outlook, you'll want to make sure. And I believe that this one might, have, I mean, again, I would do some testing. If you guys are Outlook users and you're seeing that you're not able to scan and you're not able to bring it in, definitely feel free to reach out to us and support. That way we can take a look at it on our end as well. Um, I'm a lot more familiar with the Google integration just because that's what I have set up in my system. Um, but first we would want to create that label within Google, uh, within Gmail, um, or Outlook. We'd want to make sure that anytime we've received an email from the client that we're sorting it into it, right? So that'd be a manual process. Um, as far as I know <laughs> with Google of putting it underneath that particular tag, once you've made sure that you've put it underneath that particular tag on that property, and we might have to do some testing too. So let me just like get out of the property and I'm going to, I'm just going to refresh my screen, right? We're just going to refresh. Let's go ahead and get back open into our property history. I'm going to open up that property again because I just want to see if that connection is still there. We'll go over to emails. If I go over to synced emails, looks like it's loading in. Again, we've already attached that email inbox, so it looks like it's good. So anytime you receive an email from the client, you'd still have to go into Gmail. You'd have to make sure that it was placed under that particular um, label. Once you've ensured that it's underneath that label, when you're on the property, you should be able to go to API synced emails and see that here. Um, we can also delete that particular label if we need to pull in a different one, or we can select a different label from here. So the process is creating the label within Google or Gmail, filing those emails away, any responses that you've received from the clients, and then on that property, just making sure that we've already scanned to pull in, you know, click to scan. We've already pulled in that particular label. And then synced emails, that's going to show us the emails that we've received. So those would be the steps to be able to see those emails on that property. Um, like I mentioned, obviously using our messaging tools a little bit faster. We don't have to scan. We don't have to do any of that. When we send out information and we receive information, it's going to come directly to that property um, and have that, that information there available to you guys. I usually see, it kind of depends when we talk about, um, like what would be the use case of using our, um, internal messaging feature? Like, does it make sense if it's just me? I'm a single TC. I don't really have other people on my team. Um, or I'm just running transactions, but the agents don't log into their portal and my, my, you know, I don't think I'll be sharing any of that portal access to any buyers or lenders or anyone else. Right. If that is the case, then I usually say like, you know, the messaging tool might not be super useful for you, but if you're someone who has multiple team members and you work with all of them, maybe you're, you're coordinating a ton of things with different team members, this messaging tool can be really, really like helpful in regards to making sure that you're keeping that open communication that's in open to close. So it stays native to open to close. So if you ever need to go, Oh, hey, um, Kelly, did you get my message uh, in open to close regarding Sugar Oak Drive? Kelly can go in to log in. She can go to that particular property, head over to the messaging tab. And if there were any messages for her, they'd show up here, right? So it'd be a lot, it's a lot simpler of a way to keep that communication open and transparent between you and your other team members. Um, this can also be helpful for, again, if you're, Let's say you're a TC, a single TC, and you've got a ton of agents and you're servicing all these agents. Um, and maybe they're not super responsive via text message, but you know, in the future we're planning, we're, well, right now, we're currently working through and we're revamping our um, mobile app 
So if they are really big mobile app users and they're always logging in, um, this can be a quick way to be like, hey, don't forget, you know, onboarding with me. One of the things that we require is that you use our mobile app um, to check on status updates regarding the property. Instead of you having to send an email to them or text message to them or having to chase them down, you can say, hey, I'm going to make sure to send you messages um, in open to close so that we make sure that we're talking about the correct property, just in case, you know, let's say they're running multiple properties, right? So those are the main use cases that I see a lot of people using them for. I also see people using them to just elevate their experience with their buyer. If you guys are working with like, um, and I, I always forget the term for it, um, but if you're working it where you're a TC and you're working with a buyer who's unrepresentative or unrepresented, um, this messaging tool can be super helpful for them too, right? It's a way that they can... Um, you know, or buyer or seller, really. Um, it's a way that you can make sure to keep that communication open and transparent. But once again, you're keeping it native to open a close. So if you ever have any kind of, you know, important conversations with someone and you want to send them a recap and you want to make sure it's associated with the property versus, you know, sending it in a text message um, or doing it over the phone, you know, if you need to send out a recap, I might suggest if you're, if you, um, are using our messaging tool to send out those recap notes in open to close. Cause once again, we don't have to worry about if there were any replies for the email, we'd have to scan, we'd have to sync. We'd have to make sure that that was labeled correctly to pull it onto the property, to view it there. If you're using that messaging tool and you send out a message to your buyer or your seller, whoever else that you need to, it's going to stay native to that property. All right. So that's another reason why I might suggest, you know, checking this tool out. Um, I have a couple other people and usually the main things that they say that they use it for is like coordinating with their team members. A lot of us are still working remote. Um, I think a majority of us will continue to work remote because it makes sense for us to work remote um, and being able to have an internal messaging system versus having to. I texted you, hey, uh, did you take a look at this property? And did you see um, the note that I put on there? Instead, you can send them a direct message. And when they log into their open to close account, they can either go up to the ad up at the top. It's going to say the property. It's going to say the subject, who it was from, who it was sending to, and what this was about. You can view the thread if you need to go and see, okay, well, what else was sent about this particular subject, right? Um, or you can go directly to that property. Anywhere you guys see blue font in open to close, it might be a link. So test it out, click on it, see if it opens up anything else. Cause it might take you to a shortcut to the property or to a tab on the property. Maybe it takes you to the messaging tab, kind of just depends. Let me know if you have any other questions about it or if you can think of, you know, anything where you're like, would it be a good use case for X, Y, and Z? Um, and we can kind of talk about what that looks like, but. That's kind of what I would say. If you guys are on that scale plan, there's no reason not to use that feature when it comes to sending out, um, you know, really fast, quick communication between yourself and anyone, any of the members on that transaction, any party members on that transaction. Cool. All righty. I'll give it one more minute. See if you guys have any other questions. Otherwise, I can let you guys go. I know that we only had a 30-minute Wednesday workshop today. A little bit lighter. It is uh, the spring season. And I know that sometimes people are either extremely busy <laughs> and they're unable to join our calls like these. Um, or they, they're, you know, most of your guys' needs are being met either by reaching out to us in support or joining our, our classes or, or looking in our, um, in our onboarding resources. Um, some of the cool things that we have coming up, um, just some initiatives that, um, we're working through right now and planning through, we're going to start doing more strategy posts, um, sharing those to Facebook. Um, these are meant to be really quick things, right? Like five minute videos or less, um, that kind of show you a, a tool that you may or may not be using and open to close and how to best implement it. So definitely look to that. If you guys are interested in um, joining our Facebook group, I'm going to go ahead and grab the link for it. Um, I always suggest like, you know, the more resources, the better, right? And we have a lot of really great, great questions that come in through that, um, that, uh, that Facebook group. A lot of the time when I'm pulling q and I'll get questions that are from that Facebook group as well. So I'll go ahead and drop that into the chat.
definitely feel free to join us on there. Um, but that's a really great place to come in and learn a little bit more about, you know, if you guys need to ask live questions or um, to see those strategy posts. Um, we're also looking in and planning out the next set of um, advanced training courses where we're going to be talking about, you know, uh, upgrading to scale or um, if you're already on the scale account or if you think that you're going to sign up for the scale account, um, how to convert your account currently to scale. Um, I'll also probably making, I'll also probably make sure that we include some other really cool advanced courses like reviewing smart blocks or smart block groups, um, talking about some of the heavier in, uh, features within open to close. If you guys are using commissions right now, you think open to close might work for you. I'd like to have a class that just goes specifically talking about commissions, the different kind of commissions and kind of how we currently use it. Um, we're always taking feedback on any of the features that we have within open to close. So if you guys have anything to share with us, definitely feel free to either again, um, you can reach out to us in chat. You can send us a message here. Um, or if you're like, you know what, this would be great if we could have this as a future, you can definitely submit it to our idea lab as well. Um, sometimes what I'll suggest is if you're like, I know this isn't a thing yet within open to close. Um, I usually suggest like submit an idea to the idea lab first, just so it's in there. And then you can also reach out to us and support and say, Hey, I just submitted an idea to the idea lab. This is a short loom video of like what I'd like to see with this tool. Um, and that's just really helpful for us because we can relate the two back to each other. I don't know if the idea lab allows us to post links. I'd have to double check. I think that it does when we're submitting an idea. If I say when I say submit a new idea, I believe that you can. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. You can use Loom. You can pop in that video idea right there. This is just really helpful for us to kind of see exactly what it is that you guys are wanting to see in open and close um, and triaging to see what that would look like um, to implement it. Alrighty. Doesn't look like we have any other questions. We'll just go over my end of call spiel um, and then we'll close out early today. So as always, if you guys are looking for support, you can definitely reach out to us at help at open to close, or you can chat with us by using the chat icon here at the bottom of your open to close account. Um, I believe our webinar page might be down right now, so I'll have to double check on that. But if you are looking for more webinars like today's webinar, we have a webinar page that you can join us at. We are going to be coming out with some more webinars, some on-demand webinars um, that'll go through different components of open to close. So definitely keep an eye out for that as well as those strategy posts that we'll start um, adding to Facebook. Other than that, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Make sure you're drinking water, take a stretch break, you know, relax your shoulders, unclench your jaw, um, take a deep breath. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I will hopefully see you next week.